Hi, I'm Jen Royal with the Boston Herald, and welcome to another edition of Talk of the Town, sponsored by Sports World of Peabody, New England's largest sports memorabilia store. I'm actually here in Sports World in Peabody, and I'm getting ready to talk to former Boston Bruin turned author Derek Sanderson to talk about his book, Crossing the Line, that is now being turned into a motion picture. Former Boston Bruin yes. turned author yes. about to... Three books. Three books. Three, Three books. books. Okay, well, let's talk about Crossing the Line, um, the book that is currently being turned into a movie. Um, the subtitle is The Outrageous Story of a Hockey Original. Well, right. I don't know about that. <laughs> Why is your story so outrageous? Uh, well, I'm an alcoholic, and I finally eventually realized that alcohol was ruining my life, and I met some good people, and Bobby Orr helped me, and I got sober, and, and then I had to start my life all over again. And uh, I, uh, a gentleman by the name of John Goldsmith told me to go back to school. He, were in the, he was in the investment business in Tucker Anthony. So I learned a little bit about it, and then I come out of uh, the testing period, and I said, John, I'm going to start a sports group. I want to be able to help athletes, uh, not so they won't be taken advantage of. What, you know, when you're playing or you're a celebrity, when you're doing your job, you're not paying attention to your money. All right, well, uh, I'm glad that you said all that because another subtitle is The Fall and Redemption uh, of You. Uh, talk a little bit about how you decided to write a book. I know a lot of athletes, when they finish playing, love to tell their stories. And uh, just what made you decide to put it all down on paper? Well, I think it's, it's probably uh, uh, it's more helpful to me than it is to other people. You have to, you can't keep it unless you give it away. And sobriety is a way of life. And when you live that way, that's what you do. You really do uh, help people do things. Uh, people call me two, three in the morning, and you get up, you go, and to keep them from drinking. And people did that for me, so uh, I just returned the favor. All right, well, now your book is being turned into a movie. It's titled Turk, uh, your nickname during your playing days. How did the movie come about, and how do you feel about it being turned into a motion picture? Well, I mean, there's a lot to it. I, uh, I, there's a lot more to a movie than I ever thought, and, and, and it's, it's a long, involved process. Uh, whether I agree with what Hollywood wants to do with it, that's a different, that's a different thing. Um, but I think they should do that. Uh, the recovery part, like in a later... Later Day of Wine and Roses, if you ever saw that movie, it was a great movie. But it isn't a lecturing movie, it's kind of a, we have fun times too. <laughs> so how much involvement will you have in it? I know that uh, Wyatt Russell is playing, no, Logan Marshall Green. Logan Marshall is Green playing. has been talked to, uh, yeah, he has been, uh, there are discussions with him. Uh, James Franco, there were discussions. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, and I was thinking about uh, Paul Walker, unfortunately, yeah. but he passed away. And there's a, I think people that can carry it off, that yeah. don't get a chance to act, mm. they could really act. And it'll give them uh, the ability. I think it's a, it's a winner for an actor to take the part. Okay, well, uh, Wyatt Russell is actually playing Bobby Orr, um, someone that you... Yeah had a unique relationship with, have a unique relationship with. Um, talk a little bit about how much he's meant to you. I know that he kind of saved your life almost uh, in the 90s. Yes. Uh, Bobby's the type of person that if you're his friend, he's your friend for life. And, and no matter what, how old are you when you start. But he doesn't give up on you. But then again, if you're going to do it, uh, you got to do it his way. <laughs> so, and Bobby is a real character human being. And I, people don't understand about uh, the superstar in Bobby and the graciousness is in the person by the way he was raised in Perry Sound. So it's terrific. Uh, Bobby's been there. Uh, he now he owns a golf course we belong to, <laughs> the Ridge Club. And uh, golf is great, and I play with him all the time. But, uh, you know, he's just... Bobby, he's just a guy. He's, he's good. Good man. All right. Well, the only thing I can find in common, besides you both being extremely generous and nice men, is that you both won the Calder Trophy, Rookie of the Year in the NHL. What, why do you two just click? What is it about uh, your personalities that make you, can I call you guys best friends? Yes. Uh, I think Bobby, uh, when I first met Bobby, he, uh, he was 5'9", 129 pounds, right? Uh, he was 14. He was like grease lightning. He was fast then. So I knew why. I played against him for a good six years. And then I knew he was eventually going to be a, my teammate because they bought, Boston owned both of us. They bought us both when we were 10, 11 years old. So I, he was always going to be on my team if I, if I made it. Uh, and that was good. And I think they respect for each other early when we were young. 
uh, just kind of paved the road to friendship, and, it, and it's worked well. All right, well, the one thing you guys did share, I think it's a moment that most pro athletes will call a brotherhood if you win a championship together. You two both did. Most people don't know, or I hope that they do know, that you were the one that passed the puck to him uh, for that game-winning goal uh, in the Stanley Cup Finals. C I, do you think about that moment still? Yeah, it's a fun moment, obviously. It's 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 a big to both of us, but that was a Cinderella year Bobby had. To cap it off in overtime, and I'm really glad Noel Picard tripped him because <laughs> it would have been a lot, just kind of another goal. But when they tripped him, that was, that was instrumental in making it a very famous photograph. Uh, I often wonder, what if I scored? Bobby says, you had two chances, you didn't do it. So you had to pass to somebody. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that he saved your life, and I want to get a little bit into uh, your alcoholism and the fact that you were um, Truman. You got to get down, buddy. In the fact, get out of the picture, <laughs> Truman. Adios. Oh yeah, Brian. I got a sound guy that's going to be absolutely <laughs> dead. He's going to hate you. The fact that you were sleeping on a park bench in New York City, and Bobby Orr came in and uh, helped you rebuild your life by giving you, can I say, gave you a job in finance, uh, helping pro athletes. Oh, he, now he helped me in, in other ways. John Goldsmith was the head of uh, Tucker Anthony at the time, and uh, I said to Bob, I said to Bobby, uh, "This is what they want to pay me." He says, "You, he says, you got a pair of sneakers?" He says, "What are you talking to me for? Put them on and run back there." <laughs> uh, and so I did, and, and I enjoyed it. I 21 years ago started a sports group. Um, Eric Goodman and I are associates with uh, Bay State Wealth, uh, and it's really working out well. Well, he also helped you get to rehab, correct? Yes, a couple of times. Bobby put me in in Chicago, which was, uh, he had to pay for that himself. But and a couple other times, and he and I both um, eventually worked on a dear friend of ours uh, that passed away that didn't get sober. But uh, it's not a lock. People don't. People think there's a cure. There's no cure. There's only abstinence, and then you got to get sober and then live a life of sobriety. It's different. A uh, couple questions about hockey. How has hockey changed from your days to now? So much, right? Well, hockey is. Uh, it's all about goaltending now. Uh, before it used to be playing the game. They're in much better shape. Uh, they're much bigger. I think they're, uh, the, the physical size of them is, is intimidating. Uh, they don't have quick, speedy people. Like Montreal is too small for a lot of the big, bigger teams. But Batman is ruining the game by changing these rules. What is this shootout all about? Now it's boredom beyond watching. It's, I've seen it now. And why it's wrong with the point? You don't have to have overtime. That's why hockey was in three periods, you know. Double over time. Yeah, I know, but three periods. They had to, you had so much ice shavings piled up or in the gold crease and elsewhere, uh, they had to call and, and reflood it. Uh, and now you've got the up and down with the Zambonis and people want to go home. They want to go home. Uh, and a tie was, used to be a mind day. It was a great thing, a big thing. Uh, if you win on the road, you tie in the road and win at home. That was the deal. Don't put on a show. Just trying to steal a point and get in there and work hard. And it's a very simple game. You cannot they move the blue line back three and a half feet. You cannot cover the point man. And they're one time in it. And it'll be one kid who's going to carry, carry, get a slap shot in the larynx, and that'll be it. He'll die right there. You cannot unload those one-timers and somebody not get hurt. So the one thing you would change in the game is? I'd change a lot. I never would have gotten away from the old system. The old system worked fine. When I came into the league, I took, uh, you know, the gauntlet, Bobby and I took it from uh, uh, Frank Mahovlich and, 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 and great player Stan Makita, uh, Bobby Hall. These guys are great players. Jean Beliveau, Anne-Marie Richard, that, you know, we all played under the same buildings and it was small. You, some of these foreign players come over here and you realize this is way too tight and you're going to get hit a lot. And, and, and that's a, it's a violent game played by violent people. If you don't like violence, watch tennis <laughs> or golf. All right, last question. Last year, September of 2013, you were awarded the Hockey Legacy Award over at uh, the Boston, the Sports Museum over at TD Garden, and it was given to you by Nauko Funayama, uh, yeah. one, of, yeah, one, of, really, one uh, of the great ones. Yeah, she is a really, really talented, sweet person, a genuinely sweet person, and her husband would get along great. She was, I didn't know because she was a little, a little too pregnant at the time, uh, she would, so when she came anyway and did a fabulous job, yeah. How much did it mean to you uh, to receive an award like that after everything that you've been through? 
Well, I, I you know, it's 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 certainly special, and it's, you, you really look upon it as uh, a, a personal point out. Hey, this is great. But I, I think that you, it, awards are great, but it's a team game, and, and it's the way the game's meant to be played. Uh, I can't do my job in hockey if everybody else isn't doing theirs. There you go. All right, so the book is out. Yeah. Uh, where can people buy it? Uh, this yeah. Amazon has run out. Uh, they've found, run out of it for six times already. Uh, but you can get it uh, in, in your local bookstore then. All right. Well, congratulations. You look fantastic. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, you seem to have really conquered some major obstacles in your life. And uh, I'm sure all Boston fans are, are happy to see you healthy and, and proud of what you've accomplished. Yeah, I mean, this is a great one. I told my dad. Uh, in 1980, I, he was going to give me a, 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 a application to sweep floors at General Motors, and I said, "Dad, I think I got to go back to Boston." Aren't you glad you didn't fill that out? No, no, I had a better chance there. And I came here, and uh, Spike Boda was a pro golf pro at Andover Country Club, and it started the whole thing rolling. Okay, so the book is Crossing the Line. You can get it at Amazon.com or your local bookstore. And watch out for the book turned into a movie. It's called Turk, Derek Sanderson's nickname while he was playing. So that'll do it for this edition of Talk of the Town. Log on to BostonHerald.com every Thursday to see which Boston athlete we're highlighting next. And it's baseball season, uh, which means we're going to start talking to the world champion Red Sox and also players from the visiting clubhouse.